There is a place in Africa where everything lives in a perpetual state of tension. There is a pride of lions here, and they know they have pushed into the swamp too far today. It's a place of color, of immense beauty, of abundance. The lions are on a quest through this heritage to the world, a precious jewel in our hands. The water here connects everything. It is freedom for some, it imprisons others. It is the center, the giver of life, the cause of ancient feuds. As we travel through its veins, we'll understand it is one of the greatest rivers on the planet, and everyone wants something from it. The first chapter of our story begins right here, in southern Africa. As the water flows strongly into Botswana, it forms the panhandle-shaped upper Okavango, the deep water. It is pristine, wild, and remote. It is one of the three distinct faces of the river. This is paradise. A lioness leads her pride into one of the most dangerous hunts a lion can take on. Buffalo. At least one of them has no future.
It's often the one you would least expect. No one would have predicted that her day would end so badly. The lioness's pride waits for days, but then finally moves off, leaving her for dead. Her shoulder is injured, her ankle shattered, but her story is far from over. Hers is just one of the intricate stories in this complex wonder of the world. Rains at the source over 700 kilometers upstream start a massive push of over 11 trillion liters of water each year. It takes a single raindrop six months to travel the full course of the Okavango, each adding to the epic story of this river. So begins a journey that is legendary, passing through secret underwater windows. It goes down the labyrinths of monsters. It takes us over the bones of those that did not survive the last flood, capturing their nutrients, passing them downstream to those that can use them and on to one of the greatest wonders of Africa. There are always consequences. Every action has a reaction, like a well-crafted Stratovarius violin. Plucked at one end, it shivers on the other. The injured lioness is slowly recovering her strength. It's been weeks. A lot has changed since the buffalo attack. It's as if she's woken in a completely different world. The flood has come in, cutting her off from her pride. That will make her life difficult. She's finally gained enough strength to start hunting in the overspill from the river. But she's a lone lioness with a handicap. Her dislocated shoulder has been eased back. Her shattered ankle is still healing. But she's got another reason for staying alive. Somehow, she's managed to keep them alive and secured them in the deepest of reeds, a place on the edge of the river where almost no one goes. There is a phrase in Botswana, Fiketsa di Chueto. It means overcoming a handicap, a challenge. Fiketsa, we'll call her, 
is a caring mother. There is an unusual bird in the swamp, one that, unlike Fiketsa, leaves her young the minute they hatch. They live in among the small nymph-like flowers, and each dawn the skirts made from soft petals open as these nymphia water lilies awaken. These leaves, flat buoyant pads, set the stage for a pair of gangly chicks. They old African jacanas already know where the food is. And they get there on oversized feet they'll have to grow into one day. They're not ideally adapted for running, nor flying, but getting around on floating lilies, that is their speciality. It helps that they weigh just a few grams. Without a mother, two tiny fluff balls with long toes wandering around a thin platform of lilies won't last very long out here. Chicana mothers always abandon their chicks as they hatch and leave them entirely in the care of the males. The father has his own flotation issues to deal with, but he keeps up with them, watching for anything suspicious in the world. And there it is. he calls his chicks to him. It's not just to hide them from the crocodile, he has to move them to safety. The best way for him to do that is to tuck one under each wing and walk them out of danger. Keeping the kids quiet in the dark place is always a challenge. Those that survive here are the ones that are most aware of the sinister hiding in the beauty. Sometimes the threat comes from a different direction. In an instant, the Jacana family's floating home can be destroyed by a giant, himself only looking to stuff in as much high protein from the lilies as he can possibly manage in a day. So it's off on a dislodged island to the next location for them, a vagabond. There's one single designer of paradise here. It is these giants as they glide through the vast reed beds that surround the river. The dominance of this entire system is established with each step they take. Their constant movement leaves behind them bigger and bigger highways in the woods creating a mosaic of paths right across the aquarium. It is landscape architecture on a grand scale. These are the real gardeners of Eden. They come 
for what the river provides for them, food and water. But they change that river itself, the direction, the speed of the flow. It's the perfect partnership because the river thrives on change and elephants provide that. Elephants drift nonchalantly from island to island. Their sudden and silent arrival surprises some young lions. Dry ground comes at a premium in the swampland, so the lions give it up reluctantly. But there is no doubt at all who the real masters of the swamp are. As the elephants charge through the water, they churn it all up. And that releases nutrients again. This freshwater plankton connects the entire underwater food web. And that is good for everyone, even the monsters of the deep. Then the water starts to vibrate. Another major force is on its way now. Catfish, called barbel here, arrive in their millions at the head of the flood, feeding on anything and everything in their path. It's a madness of fish. And it disturbs everything. Catfish are both hunters and hunted. To drop your guard in these waters is a mistake. Mid-flood is the best time for fish eagles to nest. All the way down the flooded Okavango, the river energizes and feeds life as the deep water panhandle winds its way through a sea of reeds and papyrus. In this upper part of the river, only very specialized adapters can survive. One fits in perfectly to the deep reed bed habitat. This is one of the last refuges of the very rare Sitatunga antelope. Shaggy coats flick off the damp 
Long hooves, much like the feet of jacana birds, support them as they wade in the mud or over reeds. But they are not alone. When it's high flood, the water is icy cold. It keeps everyone on their toes. They don't love it. For some reason, baboons don't like getting their fingers wet. But the baboons are heading for the island forests because the fruit is on the islands not in a swamp. They're edgy, making mistakes. That doesn't go unnoticed. Getting left behind is always unnerving. Today, it was the crocodile who was distracted. It is seldom predictable in this complex and magical world. In the chilly mornings, air turns to moisture. Droplets hang in the air, waiting for the sun or rise as if the very land was alive, exhaling warm breath. A blanket of fog hides for Ketsa and her cubs. But when she looks around, it is at a shrinking territory as the land disappears under the water. The cubs are growing up on the island she's on, building their confidence. But she'll have to move them at some point. It'll be months before the flood starts to drop. The water may look like a lifeline, but it isolates islands. Prey can be sparse, leaving a sterile hunting ground. Swimming across this fast flowing water would be foolhardy. So Faketsa adapts to hunting the fringes of the flooded river. Being in the water takes the weight off her broken ankle. It eases her pain. surge of water has pushed lechwe antelope her way. She's just not good at running anymore. With her injury, she'll have to develop different skills. So she starts to hunt from the water. They won't expect a lion to come at them from there.
Today, she's got even bigger problems. The herds of Lechwe have attracted a new pride of lions. They're not as used to the water as she is, but these scared cats are still a major threat to her and might even kill her cubs. She'll lie low. The river is difficult to contend with. Its volume, its unreliability, its strength, its surprises. It puts everything under pressure. Run in on a tense and vulnerable lion and risk an eruption of retaliation from this well-designed killer out of its comfort zone. These new lions have a male with them, even more reason for Fuketsa to stay hidden. But it's for these riches out here that these lions have risked the dangerous crossings. Big Lioness is successful, but she's not comfortable in the water. She's not a swamp cat. But the threat to their kill doesn't come from in the water. <laughs> Their own male claims the reward of their spectacular efforts. Pride came a long way for this, but perhaps they'll just keep moving on and leave Fuketsa in peace. The water continues to flow strongly all the way down the panhandle for nearly six months. Everything seems to be in a constant state of interaction, often in the strangest of ways. And it's all centered around the Okavango itself. It is the single thread that connects all these characters and all life here. So a place in the river's tender embrace is worth fighting for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
River's constant change throws territories up in the air. Bull hippos find new pools in the flood only to find that someone else has had exactly the same idea. Mostly these fights are about noise and display, making a spectacular splash, staking that claim. Here, those victories are often hollow ones, because these highly contested pools will ultimately ghost away anyway. Night, a whole new world exists. The diamonds at the feet of giants are an outbreak of scavenger beetles. They have been revived from months in hibernation in the mud and triggered by the flood and the moon and released into a mating frenzy to find that ideal mate in a crowded pond while they have time. The Okavango is, for just a moment, a place where the large tolerate the small, where food is plentiful, and at the height of the flood, there is abundance. It feeds residents and attracts travelers from afar. One very special family is awake and getting ready for the day ahead. She has come here to breed. African skimmers select the exposed sandbanks along the Okavango as safe havens. Despite the odd clumsy takeoff, these are some of the most elegant birds on the wing here. And when they take to the air to start fishing, it is with aerial precision. They skim the mirrored surface with long lower beaks. It is high risk fishing. They blindly feel for fish with their extended bottom beaks. And if they detect one, they grab it. If it's too big, they can snap a neck. One day, old chicks, don't you have the discipline to stay where they've been left? But there are now fewer than 20,000 African skimmers left on the planet, so the stakes are high. Each chick that returns to the warmth of protection is important to the entire species.
every one that tunnels his way to safety is worth his voice in gold. As the water glides across northern Botswana towards the middle of the delta, it starts to slow and widen. Fiketsa, easing her leg as she wades through the swamp again. It's her special technique. She tests a breeze on her face. One of the disadvantages of living on a small island in the Okavango is that even the prey start to recognize your handicaps. The local lecher herd knows her well. Their numbers embolden them to follow her closely. The familiarity may be their downfall. Fiketsa isn't thinking of them, though. She's observing, calculating, mapping. She systematically checks each tiny island in the swamp. She's meticulous. It's a process that takes hours through the heat of the day and over an exhausting 12 kilometers. This is what she's after. It's a season of lechwe births. Each cluster of sedges, every bushy outcrop is now a larder of the vulnerable. Ketza has finally managed to work this flood and turn it to an advantage. This calculated hunting through the swamp is more typical of leopards, not lions, a solitary cat. She forges through the pain, determined to bring home the food she and her cubs so desperately need. And she does it all alone. It takes her hours to drag the kill back to the cubs, stowed safely in the fringe of the Okavanga. A story of overcoming challenge. As its passengers float gently downstream, the river starts to change. At some point, the fast-flowing river changes its entire nature. As it turns the final bend on the panhandle, it suddenly slows down because it spreads out into the flats. presents a new and different face of the river. It morphs into a slow drifting realm on top of a bed of sand. The same Kalahari desert sand 
that is exposed beyond the reaches of the Okavango. The sudden change in water speed deposits the collected nutrients that now feed everything. Migrants in scarlet are nesting. Carmine bee eaters are thought to be harbingers of change. Certainly, their arrival seems to be perfectly timed. skies are ripped open again, the colony senses what this might bring. The carmines follow the smoke to the most intense, forced flush of insects they could hope for. It's a dance with death where sudden gust could capture a beater and throw it into the flames. Fish eagles are given the nudge to fly free. packed with oils, explode all around them. The fire plays a role together with the river as flames split seeds open and those seeds fall down into the swamp to soften, to tumble downstream and to grow. The deep water between the fire and Fiketsa will keep her safe. The danger may come in a different guise. Two new males strut into her territory in the swamp, following the smell of opportunity that is their birthright to fight for. downfall, but they may also be her salvation. If they accept her cubs, the new males could help her form a new pride again. But the river doesn't care one way or another. And she's not taking any chances. For now, the lone mother may have a handicap, but it's not in reading the lay of the land when it is right in front of her. Ketza, the survivor, is risen from the ashes. But while the fires run their course above the ground, they are now driven down into the root systems of the reeds and papyrus to burn underground for years, even decades. From here, the river moves on under the smoky blanket, traveling as it has for 60,000 years towards the fan-shaped delta, which spreads out, introducing us to even more characters 
who will use the river, be used by it, succumb to it, or thrive on it. King awakens. His domain is on the edge of one of the most extraordinary swamps in Africa. He knows his charges. his riches. He knows his threats. Intruders, young challengers. But today, there is trouble in paradise. Cuts and scars on his face are a roadmap of his past battles. Everyone is aware. is clear. This is not their dream. It belongs to him. The second phase of the Okavango in southern Africa's Botswana is as it fans out into a delta in Limbo before spilling out into the Kalahari Desert. The clues to why the delta changes its shape so radically here lie at the center of each of its uniquely formed islands. There are forces at work down here, building underground fortresses, blockades against the rising water table, using a combination of saliva and hard concrete. Just a single one of them influences everything here. The 
matching dance fills the air and starts one of the most magical relationships in nature, one that dominates the entire story of the Okaved. attach themselves, forming platforms for all life here. In this flat landscape, any high ground forces the floodwaters to spread around these islands, creating a sprawling delta across 15,000 square kilometers of Botswana. The foundation of each island in the Okavango is a termite colony. In a place where water is abundant, it's the high ground that is precious and used by just about everything here. There are cubs. It's an unfamiliar and sometimes tense relationship with them. In this upside down world, months after the rains end and just as the dry season starts, the flood begins to rise. Rainwater halfway across the continent is finally reaching the delta. Those that can adapt to this watery world have an advantage, especially if they can find just the right island. Two hyena sisters have found some abandoned ant bear holes to turn into a den. Hyena family greetings may be a little curious, but these are some of the most caring mothers in the Delta. All their cuteness has been reserved for when they are very young. They soon grow out of it. The older cubs have already developed bone crushing habits. So the youngest dig secret chambers into the heart of the termite mound that only they can get into. Oh. Someone else is eyeing one of their holes today. And quite simply, moves into the spare chamber. It's disconcerting for the cubs. Hyenas can easily rip a warthog to pieces, but for some reason now, they extend a kind of welcome. A working solution develops.
a hyena den during the day and at night. When they are out hunting, the warthogs are in residence. And during the twilight hours, both families are at home. It's family bliss, but with lethal jaws in the making. Both families keep a wary eye out for the odd neighbors. The male lion is patrolling his territory, but takes a diversion to harass hyenas. He's definitely also interested in the smell of hidden pigs. The unlikely alliance between these two families sharing a den worked well today, and those extra eyes and ears served as early warning mechanisms. At last, the two brothers have found each other. Their bond is vital to both of them, their territory and their pride. The teenagers have energy to burn. The males watch them closely. The first sign of small manes on the young lions has their father's attention. In a year, the large males will have to see them off. Lions of any size on the move through the swamp send shockwaves of panic through everyone. Anyone caught out of water is fair game for the youngsters. turns into a game of cat and very large mouse. Some safety is in the water. For others, it is on the Termite Islands as the flood rises. As the young piglets emerge from the catacombs, they have a lot to thank the Ahina family for. But it's time to move out into the world.
Warthogs across the delta, more than double in number in a few weeks, all because of their initial safe havens in the termite mound islands. On one of the larger islands, they are being watched from above. The leopard can't choose, so grabs up two piglets. But she can't carry both to the trees before the chaos attracts unwanted attention. Now, the hyenas are interested in the smell of piglets for an entirely different reason. The males on a territorial patrol together, right towards the leopard's island. She is saved by chance. Piglets on the wind. Right into the jaws of death. But it's a slippery little thing. And one that comes with a lot of attitude. For the largest of the African cats being confronted by something this small is a little confusing. These planes may favor the bold and the brave, but today the odds were just too great. And not enough to feed both brothers. By mid-flood, over 80% of the Okavango is under sheet water. Much of it is shallow and crystal clear. Because the flood lags so far behind the local rains, it brings new water at just the right time for thousands of animals. It is a haven for them. 
The expression of sheer elephant joy seems to erupt in their screams. in fact the architects of the Okavango. Where elephants lead, the flood follows, bringing new water down dormant channels to forgotten islands. But what brings elephant to this part of the delta now lies ahead of them on those islands. They can't reach these dates and don't want to destroy the tree itself, so they gently harvest the fruit. Being crowned by rock-hard nuts seems to be worth it. But it's a classic case of the palm, the nut, or the elephant, and which came first. The palms can only germinate if softened at the right temperature, the exact same heat as that inside an elephant's gut. These vast palm islands, so typical of the delta, exist purely because of these long caravans of traveling elephants. And the islands themselves are built on termite mounds right across the Okavango. If you're not particularly finicky about the sauce, the softened nuts in elephant dung hold amazing riches. And vervet monkeys are used to having sticky fingers. As quickly as it came in, the flood starts to shrink back again after a few months the first signs of change. It leaves soft green grasses, exposed and highly nutritious, well worth going in search of. But unfortunately, others have the same idea. It's a three-way fight. One backs up into a small termite mound and gains two advantages, the high ground and a protected rear end. It's a winning combination. In a species where fighting is both critical to claiming space and food, and is dangerous. Hippos dominate the waterways throughout the delta, making it as hazardous for other animals here. In these flood waters, there is a single rare antelope on the move today. He is so rare that he's one of a kind. There has never been another like him seen anywhere in the world. At first glance, he looks like a common red lechwe. It's not surprising. His mother was a lechwe. But his father was a waterbuck. We'll call him a watchway in honor of both parents. Today, the watchway is in deep trouble. 
and the pack knows it. The watchware is larger than any normal letchware, and that may confuse them, but the painted dogs are not easily scared off by size. But he's not a complete loner. Today, he's found a real water buck. Their interesting and different genetics may be academic now. The real threat may actually be in the water they are using for their escape. Hippos attack each other, so complete strangers are not welcome in this pool. They're in trouble if they don't leave the water now but they're in trouble if they try to. confidence of being born bigger and bolder than his siblings is paying off. But today, the two antelope find safety in limbo, somewhere between the river bank and the deeper water. Even the hunting dogs won't risk offending the hippos. It's a standoff between an endangered predator and an antelope that doesn't really exist. The intimate lives of these animals make up the complex web of the Okavango. Touch it in one place and it shivers somewhere else. Someone's paradise is someone else's purgatory. In this world of winners and losers, there are sometimes simple working relationships with no disadvantages. Black egrets have a special technique of blocking out the shine on the water to catch fish under their umbrella-like wings. Small minnows come to forage and craftily, black egrets use their bright yellow feet as lures. It's such a good tactic that a glossy ibis poaches under the umbrella without any shame at all. There is one problem. When you have your head under your wings, things can creep up on you. The pride is out hunting, and young lions are interested in anything that moves, in particular those that move slowly. These lions have adapted to being in water. The constant wading from one termite island to the next through this deep water makes them fit, strong, and some of the largest lions in Africa. The cool water allows them to forge through the delta well into the heat of the day.
In these mosquito-infested swamplands, they are after one species of prey above all else. It's their favorite, but it's not easy. Buffalo. Being down in the water grass can get confusing, so these Okavango lions have to use any advantage they can get. Elevation is a huge help. It's one of the few places in the world where lions do climb trees. They also climb to get any cooling breeze, but these heavy-set lions have to get that balance just right. And it's not just the lionesses that can climb. The buffalo are heading this way. Now, all that is needed is a hasty and elegant descent to circle into position. The time to attack buffalo is when they bunch up, when they are stressed by the deeper water crossings. Today, the pride waits and sets the ambush for just as the buffalo enter their termite island. He's eager to join in. the pride in perfect position to ambush a lost calf, the trick would be to not spook the buffalo. A big bull senses something wrong. Now, it's important for the male to be still, silent. The male's weight to agility ratio is just off. But these are Cape Buffalo. They kill lions, and today there are nearly a thousand of them. Suddenly, a young bull elephant is in the mix. Elephants are definitely the dominant species on these islands. But the lions have artfully sneaked off, and he's been left with the full force of the buffalo herd. This warrior elephant is up to the challenge. Some of the younger lions have their own troubles now.
treed by the buffalo, they have nowhere to hide. And the best elevation is just at Buffalo Horn Height. The lions have learned a valuable lesson today. One that once again establishes the reputation of buffalo as one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. The pride is bruised and retreats to give the buffalo a wider berth. As the evening air cools, tiny nymphs that have been waiting for a year underwater start to hatch. Lunar mayflies fill the air. Little bee-eaters hawk on them frantically, as if the flush will be their last meal. But here, there's no shortage of insects. The Okavango keeps providing to those that are well adapted to use the moment. So here, if you can adapt, you do well. Baboons spend their nights in the trees asleep. Getting down is a delicate matter. But these straight up and down palms are their gateway to the safest place for them to roost. Nothing else can climb these vertical trunks. The buffalo herd is also awake, moving downstream. Perhaps it's the definition of insanity, but the pride has decided to regroup and try the exact same tactic again. to need something different today or it'll all end up in the trees again it's going to take a hero an unlikely hero after yesterday's performance male lions are just not perfectly designed to hunt their manes are for display, for fighting. But the pride is uncoordinated, and the buffalo united. Then, just as the herd hits the first reeds, the second male flies into action alongside his brother.
This is why prides often have more than one male, to bring down the difficult, heavy prey that the rest of the pride simply cannot conquer. Beast is short-lived. Elephants have picked up the sound of death, the chaos, and they don't like it. The mere presence of lions, the smell of blood, and the disturbance to their sedate lives offends these animals that so thrive on peace and seem to want to just maintain that. Outraged, they act as if the lions had killed one of their own, not a buffalo. But for one of them, that may be true. A tuskless cow reacts as if she has lost a calf or a family member of her own in the past. Elephants hold that hurt and loss for a long time. slip away into the long grass, frustrating her even more. Then, without any obvious reason at all, the female and her herd suddenly settle down and allows the pride to as if to the end of the world, on a journey to nowhere. This ancient land is where the water turns to salt, the air burns on the inhale, and everything seems to wait to exhale. What little water is left is as dangerous as it is a salvation, because it is a distraction. A place where someone's mistake is someone else's lifeline. A mistaken burst of energy can change your destiny. The next and final chapter of our story of the great Okavango in Botswana is where its fingers clutch onto life as the water touches the desert, where the paradise turns into an inferno.
Each droplet is a jewel that holds the fate of a small part of all life here. It is a story of movement. Everyone is on the move. Like fragile porcelain, this part of the delta is vulnerable to the smallest change in water, in temperature, and from the swirling influences of tiny animals. Red-billed quilia in their millions start to flock. These are the most abundant birds on the whole planet. A single super flock of quilia can devour 20 tons of feed a day. And that changes everything here. Quilia will change the lives of the nearby leopard family as the flock strips the grasses down to bare sand. The little female's brother has less time for such reflections. He is more interested in how things work in the world. like the bees, returning laden with pollen. He hasn't learned the dangers of being curious yet. Bee eaters swoop in to take advantage. Bored with bees, he takes to irritating his more serious twin sister. It's the season of the sausage tree flowers, good for bees and the ideal place for the twin's mother to hang out. She's not resting, she's waiting for the fallen flowers to attract attention. Usually, leopards catch just once in every five attempts, but by using this sausage tree technique, she has a much higher success rate. It's also why we call her Moporoto, the local name for sausage tree. The cubs are developing their own killing skills, but by watching Moporoto, they might understand exactly what these flowers can give them. Rest is impossible, so within minutes, she heads back to the trees. throat hold makes it a silent death. Stealth after the kill is as important as before.
for one of the smallest of the big cats. It's a complex mosaic of the Okavango, where bigger predators and scavengers stride across the landscape as if they own it. They do own it. Here the water separates into streams and rivulets, winding fingers that cut through the grassland and sausage tree islands. The lions are in search of shade, but the breeze has hints of the smell of meat on it. If the cubs panic, they could slip. It would end their story. The lions want the kill, but just can't get to it. Thankfully, the lions have their own cubs, and the massive sausage pods distract them. Their fascination with the woody pods is a mystery to the leopard cubs, but from now on, their lives will be intertwined with all these other predators because the Okavango has one of the highest density of carnivores in Africa, and they are periodically thrown together by the flood. There is a chill in the morning air now, but during the day, the temperature starts to rise. This signals the start of the dry season when the channels begin to shrink. Oxygen levels drop. The fish that recognize that turn and head back upstream. Those that leave it just too late get cut off, isolated. The birds harvest tons of fish each year. Their collective and organized feeding frenzy will clean out a pool in just a few days. Delta, right to the end fingers, these fish traps provide for one of the greatest diversities of water birds in Africa. Being able to move is critical to survival at the fringes, where water supply is fickle during this part of the year. When the feed above ground is depleted, elephants go in search of a new protein source. They start mining the rhizomes and grass roots buried in the sand. In the dry season, the entire value of the grasses is stored below the surface. Mm. 
local residents have to protest to stay safe. Pack of painted dogs have a small problem today. Actually, 16 problems. Having this many puppies causes a problem only because one female is allowed to breed in the pack. So the alpha female has stolen her sister's puppies, but she's struggling to feed them all. It's a free for all, but she refuses to share this burden of motherhood or abandon any pups. The headache for the alpha male is that they're going to be called on to hunt twice a day now, and they're already exhausted. So is the river. After its 1,500 kilometer journey, the full thrust of the flood has ended. The water flow settles and starts to seep in. Even sleeping giants can be woken by a small niggling voice. It's a nudge that starts a ripple effect of movement. It's the largest migration of elephants in the world. Now the air is so dry that it turns the grasses brittle under their feet. They cover hundreds of kilometers in search of water. It's a 200 liter a day challenge. So these Okavanga elephants are seldom far away from water. Water that others live in, fight in, and churn up into mud faster than is necessary. This pressure on resources sets the elephants off again in search of clean water, and behind them, the land is left to rest. At these fringes, those that can move have an advantage. Warthogs, after the same buried grass roots, rhizomes. It's the season when warthogs cluster around rhizome patches. It's an awkward position to be in. Lionesses have to hunt whatever prey is in their territory.
good pig hunting day will see two, three taken in one hunt. They can hide, but they shouldn't run. Here, it's all about territory. Warthogs will feed the lionesses until the rains. But it's risky being territorial at the far end of the water. A low flood one year, and they will be high and dry. Oporoto has been hunting. The sausage tree technique is still working for her. Her island has been the perfect refuge for her and her cubs. Because the little male always gets the feed first, the female cub tries to hone her tree climbing skills. She doesn't quite have the hang of it yet. Oporoto has to start thinking about moving soon. The smell of meat and the cubs has started to attract attention. It's a stolen meal. Next time, it might be a cub. She has to move them now. It's their first venture away from their birthplace into a world filled with strangeness for them. The open grassland is very risky for a leopard with cubs. For Moporoto, there's just something about the way the vultures are circling. Something definitely worth looking into. It's a giraffe killed in a fight. Here, there are no free meals the hyenas aren't already aware of. Her cubs panic, one up the tree, the other to the bush. He is safe. Now she has a problem, and it's largely one of communication. She somehow tells him to stay in the tree, but tries to encourage the little female back from the bushes.
she tests the knight. Her tree climbing lessons paid off. The last little female is found. <laughs> the single event a giraffe fight gone wrong has attracted a full range of opportunists. It's almost unheard of for painted dogs to scavenge, but the pack needs this now. If they're going to bring up 16 pups, any meat at this fragile water's end will do. This will go a long way. But vultures will just attract other scavengers now, and the real danger to dogs is lions. So it's tense around the carcass, especially for the stranded leopard cub. Alpha male's obsession with vultures is a distraction. It's Moporoto, all a hiss with fury, way outnumbered, but with the confidence of a lion. Their adventure, their first in the world beyond their den, is over. It takes a little coaxing, but he finally understands that she feels it's safe to come down. Backwards is fine too. A last feed before it starts all over again with hyenas and possibly lions. But each interaction makes the cub stronger now, better equipped to grow in this extraordinary swampland and its fingers of water that stretch out into the desert. The further away from permanent water the herds go, the more closely followed they are by nomadic lions. Desperate hunters without the restriction of territories. Elephants dominate, and it is here that the nomadic lions find the best opportunities. They understand mm. that someone's desperation is their hope. Mm.
often young, displaced siblings, both males and females. Now these nomads must form even stronger bonds as they move into the unknown thirst land. The heat is hard on anyone who is slightly slower. She was asleep at her den when the nomads found her. Bat-eared foxes made for life. He has no choice but to watch the lions play with his mate. He'll have to raise the family alone now and be the lookout for all of them. Secretary birds are no threat as long as you stay still. The fox family is ready to bolt if she gets any closer. The scrub hair at the bird's feet knows to freeze. But secondary birds hunt on movement, even the slightest movement. It takes nerves of steel to wait it out. He just didn't have them. If you can't move, you have to change tactics. There are very few that can survive for long beyond the water. Tragedy follows any misstep out here. Procrastination when it comes to a decision to leave in a territory, a pool of mud, is simply foolhardy. Some just get caught out. As a last desperate effort, Barbel, one of the few fish in the world with accessory breathing capabilities that allow them to breathe actual air, start to walk. Some burrow into the mud and slow their metabolisms right down to barely a heartbeat, waiting for the rains. If they get it wrong, they're on the top layer and simply bake. She doesn't have the bulky body of Moporoto because she doesn't get the same food. She's a desert leopard.
But the wily leopard living on the edge has a talent for finding the impossible. A buried barbel. It's small, but in a few days, the hippo will probably be stuck too. She can wait. starts with the most gentle of breezes, dusting the scorched sands. The zebra are the first to recognize it. it comes from out there. Where the herds go, the nomads follow. movement. The hot air rises and cools. As it drops down, the air triggers a cycle of the most extraordinary contrasts. It is the eternal journey of life from death, water from dry, and motion from the static, stifling heat. They run on the promise of rain. Within days, nearly 5,000 kilometers of flat thirst land is transformed by just a few millimeters of sheet rainwater. takes the pressure off everyone. It unlocks them from purgatory. It releases the nomads to spend energy playing again. It attracts thousands of pink visitors from across the subcontinent. The arrival of the flamingos is all about sodium chloride, basic salt. The 
rain has stimulated a hatching of shrimp that they feed on. The sheet water gives them the safety and an early warning against being ambushed. Pantomime is only interrupted by a snooping jackal. He's heading somewhere else anyway. The smell of blood on the wind. Like so many other cats here, prefers the rough and spiky grass islands to the sticky salt water. It's hard for everyone. Full moon in the salt pans is a kaleidoscope of night light dancing off the white salty sands below the water. If you are a zebra in Botswana and want to find a mate, fight for your right to a herd or even give birth in the safety of thousands, this is the place to be. To really understand the Okavango is to know that this precious water takes half a year to reach the full extent of its range. It nourishes over 15,000 square kilometers and everything that lives in it. Every single piece of life here plays its own unique role in creating this pristine landscape. And together, they all change the water's flow. They are a reflection of the river itself. places on earth where giants can still roam unmolested. Where babies can trust in tomorrow and where hope is alive. It is 
a jewel. But its future is entirely in our hands.